Okay, now that we've uh, covered how to deal with significant figures in the kinds of operations you're going to have to do, you're going to have to get ready to be able to do some basic algebra so that you can rearrange formulas and solve for what you want. So we're talking about pages 20 through 24 in exercises 1J, 1K, 1L, and 1M. This is all stuff that you should feel comfortable with having done in the past and all you got to do to get comfortable with it again is to practice up on it. Okay, a couple of things to remember in order to do algebra and do it right. Whatever operation you do to one side of the equality, you must do the exact same thing on the other side. So if you're going to divide by qrx squared on the left, you better divide by qrx squared on the right. Then we want to make sure that we gather like terms. Everything with the variable you want to solve for should go on the one side, and everything with just numbers or things that don't include the variable go on the other. Your job is to try to get the variable that you want to solve for isolated as fast as possible and then in the numerator as fast as possible. Sometimes it's better to put it in the numerator first. Sometimes it's better to isolate it first. You just have to do the work, see if the algebra helps you get closer. And the only way you determine that for sure is to write out every step. Folks that make mistakes on their algebra try to do five algebra steps in their head. The best way to do it is to show every single step of your algebra. Just show them. Do them. If you divide by Q on both sides, divide Q on both sides, and then show the results after you do that. And then that will help you inform you for the next step that you have to do algebraically. Okay, so I have five different problems for you. Here they are. We're going to solve for Y in every single one. So there's A, B, C, D, and E. So write those down on a separate piece of paper. Go ahead and start solving. Uh, hit pause. And whenever you get them all solved for what you want, which is for Y, then come on back and we'll see if your work matches up with mine, if your answers match up with mine. Okay? So pause. Okay, we're back. All right, so let's do some algebra. We need y by itself in A, right? We have y plus 17. So, the best thing to do, if you start to multiply by something, you're going to change y, you're going to change 17, and you're going to change q. It's easy enough just to subtract 17 from both sides here, right? Because 17 minus 17 ooh, adds up to 0, and 0 plus y adds up to y. So y is equal to q minus 17. 17. Done. Don't worry about the Q. It's just like a number. That one's easy. B is just as easy. 42.3 is equal to A times Y. Well, we want Y by itself. This is sort of like 6Y or 8Y. AY, 8Y. The way we go about this is exactly the same. If we divide both sides by A, the a's cancel out to be 1 because a divided by a is 1 and 1 times y is y. So what do you end up with for an answer? y is equal to 42.3 divided by a. And just in case those a sort of freaks you out, pretend it's a... T well, what would you do if you had 8y over here? Well, wouldn't you just divide both sides by 8? 8 over 8 is the same as 1. And 42.3 over 8 is equal to y. It's the same thing. There's no difference between variables and numbers because all the variables are, are representations of numbers. All right, let's try another one. 3y minus 8 is equal to p. Here we have the variable that we want mixed with numbers. So let's isolate the y. It's already in the numerator, so we don't have to worry about that. So let's add 8 to both sides. And then write down the results. Negative 8 plus 8 is equal to 0. So you're left with 3y is equal to p plus 8. Okay, that's nice. 
Now we want y by itself. Well, if you remember, we had a, a value times y. You divide both sides by 3. You divide everything by 3, not just the p. That cancels out. And y is equal to, you can put them in parentheses if you want, p plus 8, the entire parentheses, information, divided by 3. That's what y is equal to. Man, I'm telling you, I know you can do this. This is not hard, but if you try to do a three-step problem in your head, you'll mix it up. Instead, write out the results. Each step along the way. It will keep you from making a mistake, and it won't take that long. Okay, let's try this guy. We've got y's on this side and y's on that side. So let's gather all the y's on one side and then gather all the non-y's on the other. Doesn't matter which side. I'm going to, uh, well, let's subtract 8y from both sides. And let's add 6 to both sides. So that ended up being 0. And that ended up being 0. So what are you left with? hy minus 8y on this side of the equality, and on this side it was r plus 6. Okay, so now we're going to pull out the variable, do the anti-distributive property. You'll see what I mean after we go through. What we want to do is we want to take y because y times something is equal to hy, and that would be h. And y times something is equal to negative 8y, and that would be negative 8. And the best thing to do to make sure you did this right is distribute them out. y times h is hy. y times negative 8 is negative 8y. So we've just sort of done the opposite there. All right? Notice that we didn't do any operation here, we just rewrote this. And so, this side stays exactly the same. Okay, so now that we want to solve for y, well this is just a number. h minus 8 is just a number. If this was like 4, 4 minus 8 would be negative 4. Negative 4 divided by negative 4 cancels out to 1. But we divided both sides by h minus 8. So all of that is equal to y. There's no way I would try to do all that algebra in my head, but when you write it out, it gets real simple. Okay? Last problem here. 15 divided by y minus 9 is equal to b. Well, we've got a number with a y and then we've got a number without a y. So let's get the y term isolated first. So that's going to be 15 over y. We're going to add 9 to both sides. There we go. That adds up to 0. So that's 15y plus 0 on the left. And then b plus 9 on the right. Okay, that's nice. What's next? Well, we have y in the denominator, we need y up into the numerator. Why not multiply both sides by y? But here's the thing. We multiply this entire thing by y. Very important. It's not just 9y. It's 9y and by. So it's easier to just put them in parentheses. Okay? So what are you left with? 15 is equal to b plus 9 times y. Well, that's just a big number. So let's divide by that big number on both sides. b plus 9. That cancels out to 1, right? So y is equal to 15 over b plus 9. Guys, that's it. That's all we need from you with algebra. And you know what? Your answers on some of these problems, especially these and maybe that one, might look a little different, but you take a look and make sure that you can figure out that what you've written is exactly the same as what I've written. Because then, 
Remember, there's lots of different ways that we can write the algebra, but as long as the algebra is correct, I don't care. You're ready to go. Okay, give it your practice. Exercises 1J, 1K, 1L, and 1M, and good luck.